while general purpose computing is a horrible way of doing generative AI. And you could see that in just a second. And so we created a brand new processor for the era of generative AI. And this is it. This is the Grace Hopper. We announced Grace Hopper, in fact, just only recently, several months ago. And today we're announcing that we're going to give it a boost. We're going to give this processor a boost with the world's fastest memory called HBM3E. The world's fast memory now, fastest memory now connected to Grace Hopper, we're calling it GH200. The chips are in production. We'll sample it at the end of the year or so and be in production by, se by the end of second quarter. This processor is designed for scale out of the world's data centers. It has 72 cores. Gray CPU core is connected through this incredibly high speed link, cache coherent, memory coherent link between the CPU and the GPU. This is the CPU and that's the GPU. The Hopper GPU is now connected to HBM3E. It has four petaflops of transformer engine processing capability and now it has five terabytes per second of HBM3E performance. So this is the new GH200 based on the architecture, Grace Hopper, and a processor for this new computing era. There's a whole lot of ways that we can connect Grace Hopper into a computer. This is one of my favorites. By connecting two of them into one computing node, connecting it together with NVLink, and this NVLink between these, between these two processor modules is six terabytes per second. And it basically turns these two, comp these two processors, these two superchips, into a supersized superchip. One giant GPU, one giant CPU. The CPU now has 144 cores. The GPU has 10 terabytes per second of frame buffer bandwidth. 10 terabytes per second of frame buffer bandwidth and 282 gigabytes of HBM3E. Well, pretty much you could take just about any large language model you like and put it into this and it will inference like crazy. The inference cost of large language models will drop significantly because look how small this computer is. And you could scale this out in the world's data centers because the servers are really, really easy to scale out. You can connect this with Ethernet. You can connect it with InfiniBand. And of course, um, there's all kinds of different ways that you can scale it out. Let's take a look at what it means if you were to scale it, take this, and now scale it up into a giant system. This is two GPUs. But what if we would like to scale this up into a much, much larger GPU? Run it, please. All right, this is actual size, by the way. This is actual size, and it probably even runs crisis. The world's largest single GPU. One exaflops, 
four petaflops per Grace Hopper, 256 connected by NVLink into one giant system. And so this is a modern GPU. So next time when you order a GPU on Amazon, don't be surprised if this shows up. <laughs> okay, so that's how you take Grace Hopper and scale it up into, of course, a giant system. Future frontier models will be built this way. The frontier models of the past, like GPT-3 and GPT-4 and Llama, are the mainstream models of today. Only after a couple of years, these frontier models, which were just gigantic to train on systems like this in the future, becomes mainstream. And once they become mainstream, they could be scaled out into all kinds of different applications. And how would we scale these out? And so let me show you this. This is how you would do it. And so now you would have a sing single um, Grace Hopper in each one of these nodes. Uh, this is the way computing was done in the past. For the last 60 years, ever since the IBM six six, uh, three system, system 360, uh, the central processing units or general purpose computing was relatively mainstream. And for the last 60 years, that's the way we've been doing computing. Well, now general purpose computing is going to give way to accelerated computing and AI computing. And let me illustrate to you why. The canonical use case of the future is a large language model in the front end of just about everything. Every single application, every single database, whenever you interact with, an app with a computer, it will likely be first, you'll likely be first engaging a large language model. That large language model will, will figure out what is your intention, what is your desire, what are you trying to do given the context, and present the information to you in the best possible way. It will do the smart query, maybe a smart search, augment that query and search with your question, with your prompt, and generate whatever information necessary. And so the, the canonical example that I'm using here is a Llama 2 large language model that is being inferenced. It then does a query into a semantic database, a vector database of some kind, and the output of that is augmented and becomes a guide for a generative model. And here, the generative model I'm using is Stable Diffusion Excel. And so these three models, Llama 2, Vector Database, and Stable Diffusion SDXL are relatively well understood as state-of-the-art and the type of models that you could imagine running just by everywhere. Well, if you were to have an ISO budget way of processing that workload, it would take, let me just choose a number, $100 million, and $100 million would be a reasonably small data center these days. $100 million would buy you about 8,800 x86 GPUs. It would con take about five megawatts to operate that, and I normalize the performance into 1x. Using the exact same budget with accelerated computing Grace Hopper, it would consume only three megawatts, but your throughput goes up by an order of magnitude. Basically, the energy efficiency, the cost efficiency of accelerated computing for generative AI applications is about 20x. 20x in Moore's law and just the current way of scaling CPUs, that would be a very, very long time. And so this is a giant step up in efficiency and throughput. So this is ISO budget. Let's take a look at this now again, and let's go through ISO workload. Suppose your intention was to um, provide a service, and that service has so many number of users, and so your workload is fairly well understood, plus or minus. And so with ISO workload, this 1x, $100 million using general purpose computing and using accelerated computing, Grace Hopper, it would only cost $8 million. $8 million and only 260 not megawatts, yeah, 0.26, 260 kilowatts, so 20 times less power and 12 times less cost. This is the reason why accelerated computing is going to be the path forward. And this is the reason why the world's data centers are very quickly transitioning to accelerated computing. And some people say, and you guys might have heard, I don't know who said it, but the more you buy, the, the more you save. And, and that's, that's wisdom. <laughs> it, 
If I could just ask you to remember one thing from my talk today, uh, that, that would really be it. That, ex <laughs> that the future is accelerated computing, and the more you buy, the more you save. Well, today I want to talk about something really, really important. And so the backdrop, accelerated computing, the backdrop, generative AI, the backdrop, um, uh, the things that uh, real-time ray tracing, the future of computer graphics unified with AI.